Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Dan Hussey with Zener Ag Hedge, bringing you a strategy of the week update here for January 19th, 2023. Remember, trading futures involves risk and is not suitable for all investors. And everything I talk about here today is just my own opinion and not a direct trade recommendation. With that being said, if you do want to turn these into trade recommendations or go over how they can fit into a trading or risk management plan for you, my number there is scrolling at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, 312-277-0110. You can always find me on Facebook and, and uh, Twitter or shoot me an email at dhussey at zaner.com. Love to discuss with you your trading plan and how to execute maybe a little bit more efficiently and better in these treacherous markets. Okay, so we've been generally range bound, right? It, the broken record continues to spin uh, in many regards. Doesn't matter if you're looking at the S&P, crude oil, um, the gold even, you know, for the last two years, we could say we've been in a range, but things are changing, I think, there, uh, thanks to, you know, macroeconomic trends that are occurring, uh, for better or worse. Um, cattle and hogs, I think there could be a case being made there that things have maybe changed and turned a new leaf. Uh, hogs have become extremely oversold. Um, doesn't mean that we can't continue a little lower, but um, I do think we're getting closer to a bottom uh, than we are to the top at this point. And um, our cattle markets might be rolling over now, and we'll look at those in just a minute. Uh, but we were fearful that, you know, February, or excuse me, the Jan Peter contract wasn't, you know, breaking or kind of heading to new contract highs alongside, you know, the, the fats there. Uh, and now we've kind of witnessed this, uh, a little bit of a reversal now in these markets. And um, I think, you know, we need to be aware of that here going forward. Um, we're going to hop into the row crops first, and then um, I'll give you updates on uh, plenty of our other markets. Let's begin the day with wheat. Um, and I guess just because I have it up, uh, we will look at the KC Chicago wheat spread here. Um, this is the March contract right now. So this is KC spread against the Chicago contract. Uh, it is our protein spread. It is a show of um, a show of the protein premium that the market is demanding right now for that KC and for the higher quality wheat over the Chicago. Um, this contract, going back to last fall, you know, if we were watching the front months there, you know, we were coming off of even money and going to 20, 30, 40 cents over. Uh, the deferred months, which were catching premiums. Uh, have now rallied up to test, you know, a dollar uh, with a dollar twenty highs here uh, at the most extreme, and a forty percent, you know, or excuse me, in a forty cent correction here back down into the hundred day moving average, unwinding the, you know, oversold condition we got into there into late or mid November, into the start of this year became oversold, uh, and has now, uh, in my opinion, rallied back up above some key, you know, short term trend indicators like the eighteen day moving average and the fifty five day moving average that suggest the market could be on the brink, you know, of a breakout. Uh, there is, you know, trend line against the highs here, right? I'm not a huge trend line trader in the spreads because they are a little more macro induced and certainly have more commercial interests um, going on behind the scenes than making them a technical kind of speculative market that we technically typically see in the outright futures. But there's something to be said here that the market, you know, from 40 cents over rallied to 120 over a solid 80 cent rally, then pulled halfway back, right? At 50% retracement into trend line support. Um, and, uh, and now we are, you know, coming out of a consolidative uh, structure uh, that could be, you know, continuing to press higher. We have seen two days of a little bit of a reversal off the highs today, um, being a uh, confirmation somewhat of a push lower after that kind of sweeping reversal like day from yesterday. Uh, but even today, it was almost a doji on these charts. And uh, and to me, this looks like a market breaking back above that 18 day and 50 to five day moving average in the March KC to Chicago spread and now pulling back potentially as uh, support before maybe, you know, heading back up to that contract high. Uh, it definitely for me, um, you know, we were uh, for some clients and for the feed, we were talking about being a buyer on the pullback here. Um, this is a great place, right, to trail stops, um, you know, using three, four day lows, you know, a stop below 90 here for the March makes sense to me. And now even on uh, after today's close, we push back above a dollar over the 94 uh, area. The lows of today would be, you know, where I would, you know, try to be protective against strategy there. Going out to our last new crop contract, 
um, excuse me, nice old crop, I guess, for this year, uh, is our July trading at 77 cents over. Uh, you can see here how back, you know, going a little bit further back here, this market, um, you know, traded from about 20 cents over to 90 cents over, a 70 cent rally. Uh, then we only saw about a 30 cent decline here, and we're right back up to highs. But generally speaking, kind of the same price action that we've seen back above the 18 day and 100 day, 55 day moving averages, excuse me, after breaking our, uh, for a, 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 a double bottom here and a bit of a test off that 100 day. Uh, so, uh, Kind of a technical market in a time when, or in a market where we don't necessarily expect, uh, you know, a very technical market to be there. It's trading as such, and that to me that might make makes more sense because when we look at those outright contracts, which we're about to do now in the week, we really don't have um, we just have a market that's been melting lower, right? This isn't a very defined, clear trend. Yes, it is still lower. Chicago wheat on the daily chart that we're looking at here, trading at 734 and a half into the end of the day, down eight cents. Yesterday, uh, two days ago, we looked like we were going to have this breakout trade of this 18-day moving average. Yesterday, we tested it, snapped back into you know the prior day's range, uh, and then today we've seen follow through to the downside in a complete rejection of that level. We haven't seen enough follow through to the downside though to, to make me convinced that okay. We're going to break these lows, but certainly we're against a little bit of a trend line on intraday, which we'll look at in a minute, a trend channel, if you will, that if we do break below, uh, you know, we're just opening the door below $7 or, or towards a test of $7 for the Chicago contract, which when we take a step back on just the March alone, we're starting to get back into that kind of illiquid, uh, uncharted territory. Yes, the March contract was trading at five and six handles, $6 handle, but Generally speaking, there wasn't any, you know, volume in this contract until about seven dollars. So, thinking about a market that wants to create the most pain that it can, I'm fearful that wheat might want to run that seven dollar figure, um, basically to squeeze every single long that this market has accumulated since May of 2021. Um, and um, it's a tough, right? Uh, it's a tough thing to say because we were, I am still expecting from a macro standpoint to be, you know, we finding a bit of low, but seasonality wise and for other factors, you know, the fact that the, the short term trend indicators like an 18 day moving average are still giving us bearish signals uh, at this time. Okay. And, you know, we're, we're getting rejected there, right? Um, if we were going to be starting a bull trend, uh, we would be breaking back above it. Good example here back in August. Yes, there's all these like kind of fake moves up and down around it. But once we got a clear break above, we come back and we test it as support. That really starts, you know, a bull trend that uses that 18 day moving average as support as we, you know, kind of trade higher, right? Uh, then once we come back below, there's almost always these tests of the figures, uh, sometimes a couple days of faking out before we snap back below. And we generally find it as resistance on the way back up. December and into the end of the year, with the massive short position that wheat had accumulated, um, I think a lot of traders, including myself, were anticipating a little bit more of a short covering rally, but it hasn't come. And markets will stay, you know, irrational in that sense longer than traders can stay liquid. So putting the squeeze on, continuing on to the uh, the longs of, you know, the Ukrainian crisis, and, and certainly since last. <laughs> Last uh, last August or so um, is kind of the name of the game. So once the market is satisfied, causing pain, you know, pushing those longs out, um, then it just has shorts to cover, uh, and that's a true you know method and means for markets to uh, potentially reverse from. So Chicago wheat on the short term or longer daily time frame here, we're below all of our moving averages. Um, you know, we can't really do too much bottom picking here. Uh, if you are long, I do suggest, you know, trying to get protection in there, whether it's just, you know, bite the bullet uh, and having stops, you know, uh, below one of these multi-day lows here um, to, to protect yourself in case it really takes a dive. But in the meantime, you know, there's still the opportunity to protect yourself with options, right? Because um, I know a lot of people have been trying to be long wheat or are long wheat. Um, there's certainly fund managers that are massively short it right now. Uh, but, you know, I think from a retail or speculative standpoint, we tend to get the most buyers, you know, trying to pick bottoms and sellers trying to pick tops. 
Um, so I find it's good to sometimes review little tricks in the trade, so to speak, to you know manage risk that I like to use. Uh, and if you hate stops, well, come in here with some shorter dated options. March only had 36 days left. They give you, you know, from a cost standpoint, you know, you're at the money put is going for about 18 cents there into the end of the day. Um, okay, that's that might be better off for you than putting a stop, uh, you know, below the, the the recent lows on the Chicago contract, which would be, uh, you know, at this point, um, a little bit more than 18, a little less than 18 cents risk there at about 15 cents risk, but uh, the point being is, if you're putting a stop down there, why not just buy the at the money put and know that from a risk perspective, I'm taken care of. The market could fall a dollar and saw, and if it rallies back, you know, two, three dollars after that, you're not stopped out of the market, right? We can look at even shorter dated options here. The February options offer, in my opinion, even better put protection for the speculative trader in this type of environment because there's only seven days left on it. Now, that doesn't mean that, right, we have infinite protection. You only have protection for the next seven or eight days, now seven with them going off next Friday. But the idea is we're cutting down on that time value cost. Now the at the money put here is going for eight cents. So for the next eight days, you're paying a penny a day for protection to be, you know, protected against the long. In, from a speculative standpoint too, this makes for a good shorting position. If, if you don't feel comfortable selling a future down here and you want to be short wheat for the next week or so, you could, you know, bet on wheat going lower for eight cents by buying that at the money put. Right. Um, and I'm just trying to show that there are limited risk means of getting the type of exposure you want to with different types of options. Right. And I'm, of course, always available to have more conversations uh, on those subjects for, you know, what makes more sense for you and your account. Okay, so let's take a look now that we've you know, done that. Let's take a look at some of the technicals now for uh, the, the Chicago wheat. 200-day um, moving average is still well above us. The macro level we've watched is all the way up at $9. Um, I do think at some point we need to get back to test that, uh, but it's not going to happen until we just see that substantial short covering rally take hold. Um, the market has been oversold on the daily RSI. We are back to those oversold, dipping into that oversold territory here today. So I do think we're personally think we're getting closer to a bottom than we are to the top of the market. That's easy to say when you're $5 off the highs. Um, but I don't see the environment where wheat prices are going to fall perhaps to like five and, you know, even the low sixes with given what, what we know about the global balance sheets and certainly wheat production and just generally the inflation trade that's been going on. I think some of our assets that maybe got overdone because of the Ukrainian crisis, wheat being one of them, coupled with the inflation trade that was going on, they got overdone to the upside and now we're getting overdone to the downside. Pendulums typically swing it like that, you know, in the market, right? They, we don't, um, we usually go from extreme to extreme, causing the most pain we can. And the last you know, eight months of, of, of price action in wheat have been just that. It's just been pain. Um, KC wheat, a little bit more bullish here, right? We are well off of the other lows here, 30 cents off their low. Um, when you look at this chart, we have, you know, only dabbled for a few brief moment below that summertime low, 200 day moving average up around 978, 55 day, or 100 day at 909, 55 day at 884, and the 18 day at 850. I'm gonna to need to see a break above that 18 day moving average to really feel confident in the long side here. We had a fake break there into the end of the year. It was holiday season. That time of year, uh, I mean, the, December in general, into the end of the year, coupled with literally that week between holiday, Christmas and New Year's, uh, and just being the end of the year, personally, I believe you can't trust in the same you know, setups and ideas that you can throughout the rest of the year. Um, it's just not a trading traders, you know, uh, trend traders environment. It's certainly a range trader or, you know, reversion of the mean type of environment. But the idea is that time of year price action should almost be ignored. And it was a fake breakout, right? We broke above the 18 day moving average. We quickly came back below and now we're testing as, as resistance. We got to call this what it is in a downtrend that is, you know, still intact. Eight dollars to the downside is going to be threatened. We've been kind of unable to push below it. Spring wheat is uh, the most impressive uh, you know, support level here at $9 of the three big contracts. Um, has not tested 
or broken below that summertime low. And I'm wondering if wheat just doesn't want to do that one flush out. You know, Chicago hits below seven, KC hits below eight, and spring wheat dips below nine for one last kind of whoosh uh, to, to, to create some capitulation on the chart. Uh, and then the market maybe rallies from then. So, you know, from that perspective, that's why I'm putting put options in front of my clients as a means of protecting wheat longs here um, because I think that you, we run the risk of a, a, an actual stop loss order in the market getting hit. Um, all right, let's take a breakdown. And with options, um, you don't run that risk, right? At least until the day the option expires, then, then it becomes real. Up until that point, it's just offering protection that the market could always unwind. Chicago wheat in the March contract, four hour chart up here. Trend line off of the highs from the 960 area. We've got one, two, three, and now four months of declining wheat price action, right? That's the, the blue and the red lines on my chart denote the monthly high and the lows. Then when you, you know, get a little closer here, you can see the light blue and purple lines. Those are the daily highs and lows for each daily candle. So on this price chart, my four hour price charts, I have both the monthly, the daily, and the four hour candles all sitting in front of me. You just have to visualize them on your own, right? Um, we start the month here, we end it here. This is a big red candle. Uh, you know, we start the month here, we ended the month here. This was a, uh, a red candle with a bit of a, you know, a wick down here with the body of the candle up here. Uh, moral of the story is though, I can see the highs and lows in these different time frames on my chart without having to move between them. And it's one of my favorite things to, uh, simple strategies to, you know, have on a chart that I like to tell traders about. All right, downward sloping trend, trend line here, clearly some kind of degree of defining the downtrend at this point. Um, you can't really call this too much of a channel anymore because these di the divergence in the momentum into these lows is starting to put pressure on the channel. And so you've got um, around the upward sloping trend line. We still have a 50% retracement from this $8 area down to seven or $8 high, uh, down to the 720 low. That traded at 760 in yesterday's high. Perfect to the tick, 50% retracement of the last decline, as well as a downward sloping trend line. Unfortunately, that's just a, to me now, uh, the, you know, the more I look at that, the more it looks like a market trading in a corrective structure up into the next in the series short. Downside targets of $7 in the short term. And certainly if we're going to be breaking below this trend line against the lows here, which we kind of did today, uh, you know, I'm expecting now the market to head lower. Maybe bounce back up to test 730, 740, and then head down to $7 for maybe that flush out um, I, I had you know, mentioned there. Uh, you could say the same about KC Wheat right now, a little bit of a trend channel higher that uh, seems like it's breaking below it here with this move down towards 830. Um, the KC Wheat, on the other hand, made it all the way up in that 50% you know, retracement, that the same one that we drew on the Chicago chart. Uh, from the 894 highs down to the 803 lows here, uh, it already traded a couple days ago, got a reaction, and then traded to its 618 line. I'm actually a little cautiously, I'm, I'm more optimistic on the KC wheat because the, the rallies that we've seen, and of course, because of the, the, the protein spread we looked at, right? I mean, we've been bull, the market's been bull spreading KC to Chicago. That, that is just the trend that's been there. Even in these, even in the last six months of declining prices for the wheat, the KC Chicago spread has been bull spread into an oblivion. It's a rocket ship to the moon right now, you know, relative compared to the moon, the rest of the the charts. So um, KC has been relatively better bid. It continues to be so, and you can see the rally off the lows here took us almost 70 cents off that low, busted through the 61.8 line in the 65% area, which would be an invalidation for this technical setup for the sellers that might have been there. And now you might have you know technical buying. Um, from buyers on the move from the $8 up to seven up, up there uh, at this, you know, uh, at this 834 area. So that first move down, you can see they got a reaction off that level. So there was somebody here that was saying, yeah, I'm going to buy the 50% level from $8 to eight, eight, or 866. That was at 834. It got a reaction. But now the question is, is it going to hold, right? Now we've come down for a second, third and fourth test. There have to be a whole new round of committed buyers to hold support of the market. Otherwise, unfortunately, their invalidation levels around 825 are very likely going to be the stops that get run next. And that, uh, to me, suggests that we might, you know, we might just be in a broader decline here still. 
um, down towards you know, for a push below $8. And if that's the case, I think there might be one more push of capitulation here uh, across the wheat market. Um, but then that might be all she wrote, but I'm not here to pick a bottom uh, until I see that reversal and confirmation uh, from there. All right, so that is 20 minutes of wheat. Uh, that is way more than I wanted to give it. Let's move on now um, and uh, begin with corn. 677 and a quarter, down four cents on the day uh, for our March corn contract. Um, I'm not going to worry too much about the, just ignore that up there. Uh, upward sloping trend lines here, right, have uh, held the market up from our July lows through the November, um, December low of 633, held again there at 652. You can draw a sl downward sloping trend line against the highs for corn as well. Uh, this is a level that a lot of traders, including myself, have been vocal in talking about. Um, it could be the start of a breakout of this wedge in the range that we have seen. Uh, but, you know, the last three days looking a lot like a potential fake fake out of this. Uh, and so I am I'm a little worried that if we slip back down, you know, towards 670 and go back to 660, we're still just in the bigger range that we've been in. 200-day moving average is at 677. 100-day moving average is at 676. 18-day moving average at 667. And the 55 day at 665, all within 12 cents of each other. Um, this is just a massive area of confluence um, that can only be described as, as an arm wrestling match over the trend right now. Um, so I'm still cautiously optimistic and bullish corn while we're basically above 650 on March. Um, I am looking to buy the dip here. You know, I think we could see 666, maybe as low as 660. Um, but I don't think that the market should get below this trend line support. And if it does, um, I think we're going to be putting the squeeze on to the long side. We'll probably see a test down towards the low in the range of $6. And actually, at that point, I would almost welcome a test below 6 and below our summertime June or July low just to capitulate, send, you know, shots across the bow, get that fear selling into the market before you know, finding a reason to reverse higher. But at this time, that's all, that's all uh, speculation and, and none of that um, really matters because we have a market that has started to try to break above some of these very key technical indicators um, above trendline resistance and has attempted to break out of its range. I'm fearful that the last two days of price action have been a failure of that, of that breakout um, coming to fruition. So, um, and, and particularly with soybeans kind of rolling over a little bit here, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. There's, there's plenty of reasons to not get too, too overly excited. Let's, you know, leave it, leave it at that and move on to our daily chart. Let's not forget corn also a little bit oversold there in the daily RSI. Um, so it's unwinding that. And from that alone, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little pullback, but when we take a look at corn and the technicals on the chart, right, um, they, they really don't look that bad um, on the smaller time frame. The daily chart still looks very range bound, right? But as we start to dive down or even maybe even assess that daily chart on the from the broader picture, from the eight, or 384, just, you know, somewhere below $4, you know, the old swing low all the way up through the uh, 2020 uh, two highs of 768 for March corn. 573, there's a big 50% pullback. We talked about that summertime decline uh, took us down into that 750, 775, 575, excuse me, um, level. Uh, and the market got a reaction off of it all the way out back up to $7. That rally all the way back up to $7 and off of the big 50% level um, took us into, you know, the 50% the line uh, of that summer decline. It took us all the way up into the invalidation line from the 618 area. Uh, and then, you know, once it punctures through that, you know, the next level to draw up is then, you know, the low to high of that swing that just rallied up and broke and invalidated one side of the trades, you know, levels. And this 640 area was our next 50% area. It's two, through two and a half month decline down into the 640 area. We've gotten a reaction. It's certainly proving, um, you know, supportive up, up until this point. And now we've got a lower bound of a trend line 
helping you know build into I think the narrative that the market is trying to coil up here. This to me does look like a market that is coiled up uh, and has almost it's almost like a rocket fueled up pointed you know pointed north right now um, with an open gap up at 736. I'm a little shocked we haven't at some point really tried to make her go and run you know up to that level. Um, but then again, this coiling and this lack of direction also just builds more stops, both above the market at, you know, the seven above this month's high at you know, 690, certainly $7 is going to be an interesting level. People, bears don't want to see it get to. And then above this 711, 712 uh, October high uh, would be the last batch of, you know, where anyone who is a seller, you know, in this decline may have their stops if they you know, logically putting and managing risk. On the other side of that coin is the bulls, right? They've got their stops below the month. This month's low at 650. It, it, you know, I don't want to see what was a three-month decline in, in corn has reversed and now become, you know, a first month of higher highs and higher lows we've had since September, October. Um, if we reverse that idea and we go below 650, we're talking about coming back and challenging our December low and unwinding all of the efforts that we've made to hold the bullish, you know, kind of aspect or perspective of this chart, right? So that would be something to be aware of. Lucky for us, these are pretty tight levels where we can almost say, hey, I'm bullish corn above 690, I'm bearish below 650. You know, if you're really wanting to get down to it, you don't need to even pick a direction in this market. Uh, for the cost, you know, to get into an option that has 36 days left on it, your 690 call is going for nine cents into the close. The 650 put is going for four cents. You could, if you're going to spend 20 cents on buying a call and a, and a put, you get the 655, uh, you know, put here for for uh, even tighter. But the idea is, is that volatility is so low right now in corn because we're just in this tight, you know, 20 cent range basically. Well, I guess it's a little wider than that 30 cent range, um, but it's been there forever that we can, you can afford, you know, to buy options just outright on either side of the market and just say, I think corn's going to be 60 cents above or below where we're at, meaning that that 20 cents I spent on the options, you know, either one of those sides of the option could be worth 30 or 40 cents uh, and be, you know, a non-directional play at this point. There's other ways of skinning that cat, but um, hey, um, not a bad idea. To that point, you want to get long corn here at 676, right? Into the end of the day, maybe you're going to buy it at 666. Maybe you're already long corn. A 650 put for the next 30 days only costs you, uh, you know, four cents to own right now. Um, so instead of having the stop down there, buy the put option for the next 30 days to have that protection on. And that's the type of, right, you got to use the tools that are there for you at the appropriate time. When volatility is very low, it's the right time to buy and go long options. When volatility is very high, we can sell options in conjunction with futures to have them covered to help minimize some of that impact and earn that extra premium drip from that extra volatility that the market is charging because time value still decays at the same rate. More options still go to zero at their expiration date if they're not in the money. So any of that extra premium that is driven from volatility can equally evaporate from the contract which means an option seller is putting it into their pocket. That doesn't mean, though, that there aren't unlimited risks associated with option selling, and you need to be aware of those risks. But a guy like me can help uncover that for you. Uh, just ask, you know, ask your questions away. All right. So coming back to the smaller time frame from cor on corn, um, going down to a 15-minute chart real quick. Got a bit of a three-wave move down. Um, you know, I'm looking for the 50% retracement of this whole decline, perhaps. Uh, we certainly have a, a swing here that was trying to hold its own from, uh, you know, the 668 area up to 888. Got a reaction off of 678. Um, quick one-day pullback, a little overnight price action a reaction off of it. And now the market's been taken down to really test the, the kind of invalidation area there. We get below 677. I wouldn't be surprised to see 670, um, uh, you know, trade. It's not that far off, uh, and I feel like I'm splitting hairs inside this range. But um, I, I'm, I am willing to take the risk on a range break higher here on buying this dip with very clear 
uh, you know, define stops below 650, below the lows of the month uh, to some regard, whether that's using options, a put option as, as, as your risk management tool or using an actual stop in the market. Um, this is the type of setup that I, I look for, right? We can be wrong, but it's got given us uh, an entry point and a reason to get in after some confirmation of potentially the market trying to do something. It has defined risk and a level of invalidation that I don't like. And I haven't talked about it yet, but the upside targets on this chart have already been defined for us. The 640 swing has an upside target of 745. The open gap at 736 is also very likely. And of course, the push in the new contract ties at $8 or a swing to 850, which is the swing from the 573 area would likely take us all the way up to 850. So we've got upside targets to look for as defined on the chart, a clear level of invalidation and a potential pullback to position on. That's a trade plan for you. Uh, whether or not it works or not is up to the market gods and we have no idea, um, but we know what the risk is, what we're expecting from it. And we can talk about, you know, in addition to all that, some scenarios of the what ifs that goes here and here and that, this, that, and the other. All right, uh, March soybeans trading at 15.14. And by the way, new crop here is still flirting with $6 uh, for corn. Let's just look at that really quickly because, um, uh, you know, never mind. I don't don't have the chart ready. Let's We'll, we'll look at that next week. Um, we'll look at December, November corn and beans respectively next week. Okay. Soybean chart on the daily time frame here. 18-day uh, moving average is below us at 15 bucks. Kind of a, one of the reasons that I uh, am somewhat expecting the potential for the market to, uh, you know, pull back you know, potentially to 15, maybe even below at this time. 55-day moving average at 1471. 200-day moving average is uh, at 15, 1451. With the 100-day. Uh, potentially giving us a golden cross here. Any day now, this 100-day moving average should rise, move back above that 200-day. Uh, and for the first time, you know, since October when they crossed over negatively, um, you know, the last time they gave us a bullish crossover was way back here in, you know, December of last year. So very reminiscent, you know, this time of year, if the market can, you know, prove itself uh, with a rally, uh, you get these, you know, the, the rainbow effect where your moving averages all move into their, a respected, you know, logical place in a bull market, 18 day above the 55 day, above the 100 day, above the 200 day. We're, you know, we were in a period of consolidation, much like corn here into the end of November, right? You had down, upward sloping trend lines against the lows, downward sloping trend lines against the highs. We even, you know, rallied up here, started to break above that trend line. And this is right here. This is a good example of why, you know, today's sell off in corn doesn't have me convinced we're going to go lower even though, right, we were trying to break out of a, a trend line and we kind of failed and, and we're coming back into the range, right? That happened back in, you know, the end of November. The first two days of December, though, were a sell-off that took us back, you know, down into the middle, of, into the range we were in. And, you know, that was actually, in my opinion, a gotcha setup. First, a gotcha to any momentum buyers who bought the highs here on the breakout, right? That'd be like buying corn now. And then the gotcha trade to any sellers, uh, after the market sold off a bit, took you down, kind of convinced that you that was a fake out, and then you know proceeded to rip higher, uh, and hasn't exactly been a straight line, but the trend has been higher, right? Uh, you take a look at corn, um, it's just at a different point in that, right? We're kind of doing that fake breakout, maybe we trade down, that's your opportunity to buy, so long as you don't invalidate the lower bounds of the trend line and the monthly lows. The market, you know, then we'd expect it to say, ha ha, gotcha to the bears, right? Um, so we'll continue to watch for that. But that's a good example of how these trend lines, they're good trading tools, but you have to understand the nuances of how they get messed with by the market price action. Okay, so now we have upward sloping trend lines and maybe some kind of channel going higher here in the soybeans. Uh, certainly the 18 day is above the 55 day moving average, but the 200 day and 100 day haven't crossed over. And typically speaking, when you see a crossover of those, you sometimes can get a reversion to the mean. Um, so just watching out for that as well. We are coming off of another overbought kind of uh, high here. And so now that we've unwound a little bit, uh, the last two days of price action were an, uh, a, a bearish uh, or an outside day that closed red. And then today, that was yesterday's price action, right? We've had expanding price action for the last three days failure to break out. And now the market has given us a down day. Um, certainly below 1510, 
don't see why we don't test $15. It's not that far off, and, you know, to say, but at that point, we're probably, in my opinion, going to be falling below 15 down to 14.8 to 14.60. And that's going to be the area where I'm interested in maybe trying to hang out and, and, and be a buyer. Um, I don't know, I, you know, nothing resting out there yet and certainly going to have discussions with clients on how best to, you know, kind of tackle that um, if and when and how we get there. In the meantime, however, I would advocate that if you haven't gotten sales done yet or you want to get more sales done, this is a great opportunity to do so when the market's just starting to turn over. We can still try to find a way to own $15 puts in the options. Um, uh, let's take a look at that now. Uh, I would probably go out to... July, well, $15 put in July is going to be your at the money put, and that 62 cents is a whopper of a cost. Um, then, in terms of a true hedge, you know, the, you can make sense of that, right? Locks in 1460 or 1440 on the board. Uh, I would look to cheapen that up, though. We can still sell $16 calls for 31 So now you're talking about having a true floor in, a, in price at $14.70 through July on soybeans. Um, and then if we rally up to $16, you're going to have to accept the fact that that's going to be one of your sales for this year. But if you're sitting here, if you are if you were my client, you were, you were complaining to me about having a $16 sale in soybeans, um, I might hop on a plane, you know, come out to where you are, take you out to a nice dinner, slap you in the face to wake you up, uh, and then remind you of, you know, how good a sale $16 beans is, right? Uh, regardless. <laughs> but jokes aside, uh, you can get a dollar wide collar or risk reversal spread for about 31 cent cost right now that has 155 days left on it. So that is that alone ends up being a pretty good proposition to start protecting uh, bushels that are either unsold or actual longs in the futures market, right? Because that's kind of a covered strategy uh, to, if you're long futures in some capacity, you can own the at the money put, put a put a complete you know stop in on any kind of bleeding if we do fall apart um, and go from there. Okay, now in the near term, take that strategy, look at it in the March, $15 puts in the March, you're going for 21 cents. Uh, we can cheapen that up by selling yeah, I'd probably still sell the 16, maybe the 15.80 and bring in 8 cents. So now we're talking about, right, a, a cost of, you know, 13, 15 cents to get a floor in here at $15 for the next 36 days uh, when we're potentially looking for, uh, you know, a little bit of a pullback, right? So we, we shall see. Uh, the four hour chart here for uh, soybeans. We've got a lot to get through and a little time to do it, so I will get through this pretty quickly for us. Uh, upward sloping trend lines, channels, uh, we've got downward sloping trend lines that we are continually banging into and finding as resistance, but we do have this $15 mark that ever since June of last year was clearly resistance. This is the market trying to break above it. Uh, you know, a pullback here into $15 and maybe even $14.90 is a technical buy. I just, I don't trust the price action the last 24 hours. Uh, I do think we'll see one of those like, you know, kind of like capitulating flush outs. I think hitting below the $15 mark just to run stops is probably makes sense. Uh, but I do not see us really falling back into this old range too far. So again, lows of the month are kind of my area in the sand that as long as we're above that 1465 area, I think beans are, you know, technically a buy in this dip for higher price action towards 16. However, um, below 1465, I think then now we're talking about maybe even larger capitulation uh, below 14 and maybe even a test of $13 in the beans and the teens ideology. That doesn't mean that we can't get to 16, 17 or $18 beans by June or July, however. We could still go down to $14 and below $13 even from here and make our way to $17 beans. Bull markets need to be fed and we don't have the news cycle now until we get into plantings, until we get into weather markets in the summer, and certainly without any massive exports coming on the tape that would shock this market. My biggest fear of everything I have for soybeans is that absolutely enormous crop that is about to be harvested in South America. Um, so, you know, be be aware um, that there is, uh, there, you know, 
there's a reason we haven't broken out and headed to $16 yet, right? In South America, in my opinion, is that reason. A lot of chop here. It's very hard to bolt, pull up any kind of technicals, but in the near term, we can at least start looking at some and trying to figure this out. So some kind of 50% retracement here was, you know, held the 618 line, I guess. It tested it once, but generally speaking, this 1392 area held as support. We then kind of started this, this stair stepping higher, right? One step forward or two steps forward, one step back into the 50% retracement at 1422. That uh, level, remove this target, went up to its targets of around $15, maybe a little bit above there. Next in the series swing from entry low up to the highs that filled the target. Two steps forward, one step back, next 50% long, held at 1474. Got an upside target of 15, you know, 65. In the near term, the swing, however, from the lows of the month to highs of the month with a 50% retracement at 1507 does technically, you know, might actually entice the longs here and be a reason that there could be buyers uh, defending us getting, you know, to $15. I, you know, just we've been so choppy that some of these levels are. We, you know, you got to take them with a grain of salt. We're not, uh, we're not in a full-fledged trend yet where I would uh, be using 50% retracements as, you know, true entries. Uh, there's other things of confluence I need, and this upward sloping trend line that comes around 1490, the lows and runs, are, um, you know, in a, in a second test potential of the 1480 old support um, are below us. So, you know, very, very range-like price action, right? These aren't a lot of straight lines happening. Uh, is my point. Okay, so uh, cautiously optimistic there on the soybeans, but you know, expecting maybe a little bit of a pullback. I think there's an opportunity in certainly both uh, corn and beans to be a buyer on the dips, but be aware of where you draw that line in the sand. For me, the lows of the month, 650 on March corn, uh, and you know, 1465 on the November or March beans. Uh, I, that could change things dynamically here. We, we're looking for a bottom to form. We're cautiously optimistic about that, but it's, you know, the price action of the last 48 hours have really put the pressure on the bulls and certainly, in my opinion, might be setting up for one more capitulating flush out to the downside. Unfortunately, with today's close, it looks that way. But, you know, after that capitulation, if there's a subsequent rally thereafter uh, and a potential right reversal signal, then we'll be talking about you know, hitting, hitting the ground running. Okay. Um, S&P 500, then we'll talk about gold real quickly, oil. Um, actually, before the S&P 500, before I forget, let's, I guess, let's fill it, finish out our rope or our ag products. Uh, cotton today, uh, March cotton back into, um, back into the range we've been in. I uh, don't want to see this market get below yesterday's low at 82.80 area. Otherwise, we might be, you know, breaking this consolidative range that we've been in. Uh, we could be breaking it lower. This consolidative range could, you know, uh, need one more big flush out down to the lows of 70 uh, to capitulate and then, you know, reverse. But I think much like wheat here, cotton has gotten beat up. It got overdone in the inflation trade. Now it's gotten overdone in the sell-off. And to me, with corn at, you know, the high $6 mark, uh, cotton below 90, doesn't seem like a lot of cotton acres are going to be put into the ground. Uh, and everybody I'm talking to kind of agrees with that idea. But that doesn't, you know, necessarily, we're still a ways away. We can still spend a week or two selling off before reversing, of course. And certainly if the row crops take a little dive here, I'm worried cotton might take another dive as well. So a move down towards 80 wouldn't break the back of the market. 78 could be, uh, and even down to 75. But uh, and maybe even to fill this gap down around 74 if it really were to break down. But, you know, I used this over the last two days. We used this uh, this little bit of reversal to position long. Um, I've got, uh, you know, I don't want to see the market get below yesterday's low. Uh, we can, you know, protect that with stops or options. And certainly at some point here, a breakout of this downward sloping trend line and the 100-day moving average at 86.15 uh, and a move above that high, uh, to me, would constitute a breakout to the upside at this point in time. So. Really tight. Bears and bulls have both been right on this in the, on this chart, you know, since November. Um, but I, you know, we're getting ready for a move in either direction. Pick the direction you want. Set your stops and 
you know, hang on for the ride, so to speak. Uh, but I do think a move back towards the 200-day moving average at 96 or a test of the $100 figure in cotton is, is in the works at some point this season. Um, and, you know, into the first quarter is kind of when I expect it uh, to happen here. Uh, but we'll see. 18-day moving average at 83.39. We've just been reverting to that mean. Um, so no trend has set in. Uh, but watching those levels carefully because we did you know, try to break back above it here. And we're coming back down to it. We... Tomorrow is an up day that takes us higher. I think it's onwards and upwards to 90 and 100. If not, keep the stops uh, high and tight here for protection because uh, it could uh, could get hairy quickly. Feeder cattle in the January contract, a uh, pretty big sell-off here for our feeders. Um, you know, it's a uh, don't have much time left, you know, uh, on this contract. But even if you go forward, you can see uh, they are starting to, I think, lead the cattle generally lower. Uh, we finally broke below all of our moving averages here around that 81 cluster. Uh, and it was really this, um, it was this feeder cattle chart that fear that I was most fearful of uh, for the, you know, rally that we are seeing in live cattle because it just feeders weren't confirming, right? Feeders only made it 50% back of this last decline back up to 184. I would have expected them to push above 190 you know, when fats were, were, were pressing 160 and, and trying to go through the contract highs. That wasn't the case. Feeders rolled over or started to kind of roll over and now have started to accelerate that rollover lower. Um, downside's probably somewhat limited still too, but, you know, retracing down towards 74 and 70 uh, isn't out of the question, uh, unfortunately, in my opinion at this time. We've got a little bit of a gap here on the chart from today's price action. So, you know, move back above 179 to fill that gap at some point could occur. Um, but yeah, you know, feeders have rolled over. Look out below for the fats to some regard uh, until we find, you know, support. This could be denoted in the uh, February fat cattle here as an ending diagonal type structure. Um, you get this consolidated price action pressing up into a resistance area. Now that the feeders have rolled over, the fats are starting to do the same. And I'm fearful that we're going to move down towards that 200-day moving average to test the lower, you know, bounds or lower sloping trend line on this chart at around 154. Uh, and below there, you're really opening the door for a much deeper, broader decline, 148 uh, being kind of the next target area within, I don't want to say uncharted territory, but um long way down this market could could go last but not least here are hogs i got the august hoggy up because it's the least um detrimental on the chart but um really if we're gonna break down the feb hogs here there we go the market has completely broken down 100 percent retracement now of that october rally uh, and we're down to the very extreme oversold territory. So August hogs look a lot different than this uh, this Feb chart, don't they? In, in, in fact, the further you go out, you know, June, for example, um, the market has, you know, pulled back even less, right? That, that October rally, we've only pulled back 50% of that retracement. So I think hogs might be into a supportive area here. Um, we'll see if that, you know, rings true. But I think this pullback towards 100 in our deferred contracts uh, right now is, uh, you know, a test of broken resistance now of support. But um, if cattle are rolling over, I find it hard to believe the hogs are going to rally um, significantly here um, in this environment. But we shall see. I don't don't have much more to say there. Let's move on to some of our other charts because we've only got about 10 minutes left. All right, let's go to the S&P 500. I have talked a lot about how I'm not a big bear in this environment. Um, can the market go down? Sure. But do I think we're heading into the doom and gloom price action and recession that everybody is calling for? Absolutely not. I just do not see it. I don't see it in housing. Uh, interest rate right, hiking cycle is not strong enough. Uh, the job market, there are so many jobs out there. You should just discount our unemployment rate because those are just people who don't want to work, right? They're just not going to be productive members of society when you can go to uh, Aldi's, go to which is grocery store, right? Go to um, 
McDonald's go to anywhere, right? Any non-skilled labor job is offering 16 to $20 an hour right now. If you don't want a job, it's because if you're not getting a job, it's because you don't want a job right now. Um, and that's the, kind of the reality of the situation. Um, the market has also not given me many technical reasons to be very bearish here. Uh, we've looked at the larger time frames, uh, how that 3,500 area was a big 50% swing from the you know COVID lows to the highs. This looks like a market correcting back into a 50% retracement. Upside targets from that swing are 5,400 new all-time highs. We've already started to put pressure on the downward sloping trend line that has defined this bear market at this point and even tested above it there in the last rally. That last rally also failed to take us back into the full 50% retracement short at 4,200. Last but not least, the last swing down from 4,329 down to lows failed to hold its 50% retracement. It got a reaction. The bears were there at 3,900. They sold it off that 50% level, but then the bulls came in here, bought up there the small first 50% long off of lows and ratcheted right through their invalidation, taking up to a test of this trend line resistance. The market then pulled back into swing from the 3502 lows to the 4183 highs, right back into 3842, 50% retracement. We spent an entire month holding that as support here. Still soothsayers and deniers saying we're going lower. Now we've rallied off of that low. And wouldn't you know it, the rally that we rallied off of that low took us up, hit 618 lines yesterday up at 4042, up in the 4035 area and made a new high of the month busting out any kind of short against that trend next in the series now from and from the previous lows to the highs look at that a three-day decline into a 50 percent level at 3900 i tweeted about this this morning 3900 is a big level let's see who's home the market's getting a reaction and they're trying to turn this day into an, an, a doji the, the market's probably going to go positive here we're only down 16 points after being down 50 something you know after a big 100 point down day, this is not a bearish reaction in the market. This is three days down to cause margin calls against longs who are now getting busted out by their brokers right before the market rallies higher, in my opinion. So watch for a move back to 4,000, watch for a breakout of the highs of the month. And if that's the case, onwards to 4,300 we go. And beyond that, we're in an eventual swing, in my opinion, towards 5,400. Um, I've gone over the big macro time frame charts uh, when we take this and we go back and we compare it to, you know, previous recessions and stuff, you have to watch my other videos for that. We don't have time to go over it today, but this is like a complete analog recycle, rinse, repeat of the price action we saw in the 80s coming out of Black Monday and going into the incredible bull market we had in the late 80s into the 90s. Um, and nobody believed it then. Nobody believes it now. Bull markets climb a wall of worry. I would be worried if everybody else wasn't worried. Simple as that. Um, so I'll keep harping on that. I could be dead wrong here. Certainly we've been in a larger range. So the technicals that are holding, right, they have a high risk right now of invalidating and falling apart. But so far, the little crumbs that I'm seeing in the footprints in the sand are very bullish, not bearish right now. And by the way, if you're expecting a recession here later this year, Guess when the stock market statistically bottoms before an, ec or a, an economic recession is actually, you know, true with unemployment, all that stuff. Two quarters before it. So if you've read all the tape and everybody talking about recessions in the third and fourth quarter this year, guess when the market usually bottoms? Two quarters before that, which is boom, right in the time frame we have. So I don't know. To me, everything's aligning for a much bull bull more bullish risk on type of move here. Um, I don't think the Fed is doing enough to hamper inflation, and I think that that is going to come back here and rear its head. All right, bond markets also rallying today. Gold and silver rallying. Bonds uh, having pushed up to that 132 handle, full 50% retracement off of their low into the 125s. We've got a channel heading higher here, folks. Um, we're going to be putting test onto this old support here at 136 to 132, uh, and above 136 opens the door here, uh, in my opinion, for move all the way back up to 154 in the 30 year note, um, pretty technical market going on right now. Uh, it was not super technical. It was just a meltdown with fear, the Fed fear, the Fed put. Now I think we're going back the other way um, with, with the Fed in their quote unquote kind of pivot, right? 
Um, all right. Uh, and by the way, the stock market is not the economy. So no matter what you think about recessions and slowdowns, the stock market don't care. Um, it's, it's the stock market is the sum of all the buyers and sellers. Um, yes, recessions cause a lot of fear selling, uh, but they also end up being the best time in your life to buy, uh, you know, the stock market, so to speak. All right, gold, three waves down in gold, completed down into the 16 area off of 2000s twice. This looks like a big old flat wave structure. Market has had a substantial rally up now through the 618 lines. It holding into 1850 was our fear here. Now we finally bust it out and through. And what do we do now when we break a 618 line from lows of the on the uh, of that swing to highs after? The highs may not be in. We might go a little higher. But we keep drawing up that 50% line with anticipation of a pullback. We get a pullback towards 1780 on gold. That is a gift and a big buy, in my opinion, at this point. As I think gold and silver being the slow laggard right now, silver will very likely play catch up and be. You know, silver is always late, but it, it finishes the move in precious metals, right? Um, it's always the most exciting towards the tail end of it. Um, but for the time being, if gold can give us a pullback, and this might take a month or so to do, right, because this is a three-month rally, um, a gold pullback into that 50% retracement from now the $16 swing up to highs, I like being a buyer there. I think the market is now entrenched in a bull market that'll take us above the, up towards 2300 and eventually onwards to new all-time highs. Um, and last but not least here today, let's take a look at crude oil. Really not much going on. It's kind of that same sideways price action that we've seen on this chart before. Uh, runs a risk of falling apart and making a new low and testing down to 68. Big macro levels we've talked about, that 50% swing, 68 to 70 is also that 50% level. It's, the, it's a cluster of where all these old highs were. And we've come down to test after that big breakout. And it also happens to be the level our fine government is telling us that they would like to try to replace and uh, replenish the strategic oil reserve. So you've got China coming back online. You've still got Russia, Ukraine and conflict going on. And you've got the U.S. committing to replenishing their SPR. I think we're trying to formulate a bottom here on crude. But the last swing from 93 down to lows, very clear 82 area. This 50% retracement has been holding uh, and still holds in what looks like a three-way move off the lows. So you can't say that I think the uh, market is out of the uh, out of uh, trouble yet. We are trying to break above some downward sloping trend lines, but there's certainly more of them. Uh, you can see one here I've driven on the chart up around 85. So until we break above 85 and head to 90, I'm not truly committed to being along uh, just yet. I would rather wait for a little bit higher than buy the dip back towards 85, you know, what have you, and go, go on. Because right now, um, right now the range is clearly resistance at 82, support down at 72. This is $10. The market's traded four or five times here since November. Um, it could certainly continue to do so. But okay, you know, energy products have been looking pretty good here, um, or at least crude oil maybe putting in a macro bottom but it's a slow turning vote in this environment. All right, everybody, that concludes today's strategy of the week webinar. There's a lot going on there. Uh, thank you for joining me. You can always be, reach me over here at Zaner at 312-277-0110. Find me on Twitter, shoot me a message here on Facebook or, or uh, send me an email at dhussey at zaner.com. Always looking to discuss your trade plan and how we can help improve that for you. And with that being said, everybody, I will be back with you as price action develops. Take care, everyone.